following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Our multidimensional universe, the multidimensionality of the universe is something that mathematically is already proved. But uh, unfortunately, it cannot be proved through our consciousness in the state in which we are right now. The consciousness or that the uh, religion is called soul, is that element uh, that uh, is the, our own reality. Usually uh, people used to identify themselves with the body. And uh, when we ask them, who are you? The answer is, well, I am a physical body that has a soul. When the answer has to be backwards. Because we are immortal souls with a body. The body is just a vesture. The suit that, you, that we utilize in this three-dimensional world. And the consciousness is that element that belongs to the spirit. The spirit is a real being, the real self, which is not incarnated, but the path of the self-realization is precisely to incarnate the spirit, to incarnate the being. And, and, and uh, we are souls, as consciousness, we have to work in that. That is our goal. Many schools and religions think that the being, the spirit, is incarnated already in the body. But it is not true. The only thing that we have within is not even the whole soul or the whole consciousness. It's part of it. So that consciousness has to be aware of all the universe. That is the purpose, the goal of the existence. To be aware of everything that exists in this multidimensional universe. And for that we need senses or the consciousness needs to build vehicles in order for us to be conscious of all of those dimensions. In this lecture we are going to talk about them in theory because in order to be aware of those dimensions we have to awake consciousness. To awake consciousness, to be awake means to be aware of all the reality of this universe. So, psychologically speaking, when we say we are asleep, 
we are not referring to the physical body. Because the physical body is just a vehicle. So when we say we are asleep, we are pointing to the consciousness. Because we are three, three dimensional beings. See the exercise, for instance, that always we perform, and there is a mantra that is related with the pineal gland. The mantra Aum, A, Ra, Ba, Sa, Ma, Di, Di, Di. It's a mantra that put, puts in activity the sense which is related with the space. So through that pineal gland, you get the power of powers. Usually when people enter in the esoteric studies, they want always to develop psychic powers. And they always so attached to clairvoyance, clairaudience, telepathy, and many other chakras related with the pineal gland, the throat, the heart, etc. You know about the seven chakras. But the main chakra, which is called the crown chakra, the Sahasrara chakra, which is located on top of the head, is directly related with the pineal gland. The pineal gland is the seat of the soul. And uh, really, in the pineal gland, we have uh, that sense, which is better than clairvoyance. The sense that permits us to be aware, not only in this three-dimensional world, but in the higher dimensions of the universe. So, the self-realization of the being is also the complete development of that chakra, which in order to acquire that development, we need to incarnate the whole soul. It's only possible by incarnating the whole soul. In reality, that uh, sense is not in activity in each one of us. And it's not in activity because of our laziness. Because usually we are always outside of ourselves. And we are not aware of our own particular universe. When we talk about the universe, all the time we always put our mind outside of ourselves. When we say we ha you have to be aware of this multidimensional universe, always we put ourselves in this place in which we are right now, in the universe outside of us, independent of us. And that's precisely the problem and the mistake. Because the multidimensional world is not only outside, but also inside of us, because we are part of this universe. But because we are asleep, consciously speaking, we think that we are in this place and the rest of the dimensions that we are going to talk about, we know about, are always outside. And that's why we have to put the example of the consciousness in relation with other beings, other creatures that exist. The zero dimension is that that we call the single point in the space. So when we are in the zero dimension, which is that single point in the space, is when we are here and now. Imagine always that we are that particular point. We have always to feel that we are the center of the universe. In order to be the center of the universe, we have to be there. Psychologically speaking, we say that the center of the universe is everywhere and nowhere, because it's inside of each one of us. That point is always the being that should be remembered all the time. 
That point is inside, never outside. That point could be called God, spirit, energy. But of course, is a consciousness united with the being. When a point in that particular spot, which is in the space, is in movement, it's obvious that is living a lot of points or dimensions. And uh, at the end we find one line, which is the union of all the points, all the same point in movement. So then you see the multidimensionality of the line. But that line itself is called the first dimension, which is the unidimensional world, the consciousness which is aware of that unidimensional world is a consciousness that lives in a world of one dimension. That the universe is multidimensional. To be aware of one dimension, it doesn't mean that we are living all, only in one dimension. We live always in all the dimensions. But the goal of the consciousness is to awake to the reality of all of those dimensions. Let's put an example of a creature that lives in one dimension, but is related to all the dimensions. And this creature is a snail. When you worm, the snail lives only in one dimension, which is the line. But you can watch the snail when he's uh, acting, moving, and the snail is not aware that he's being watched because its consciousness is only aware of one line means that his physical body has the capacity of perceive one line, one universe. That line is related with the world sensations. But of course, we know that when the line is moving the space, is living multidimensional lines many lines that eventually will form that that we call the plane. So one plane we say has two dimensions, length and width. But within that plane you find many dimensions. Creatures like the horse, the dog, the cat, are creatures that only perceive two dimensions. Their consciousness are aware always of two dimensions. These are related with its physical bodies that are bodies that perceive sensations and representations. Taking the example, for instance, of the snail, he perceived the sensations of all the objects near it. But the snail cannot receive representations of those objects. But the dog, the cat, and the horse receive those representations and know. If a cat, for instance, smells the sensation of nice smell from a piece of chicken, he knows very well that it's coming from that piece of chicken in front of him and he's going to eat it. While the snail only perceives the smells, he doesn't see, he doesn't perceive the representations. So, but the dog, the cat, and the horse, of course, they live in all the dimensions. So see the consciousness and how the evolution 
in this nature is forming different creatures, different beings that are capable to perceive part of the universe. We know, for instance, that we are three-dimensional beings. But we, we know that because we perceive only three dimensions. Related with nature, we are intellectual animals. When we talk about consciousness, we have to state that in Greek, that consciousness receives the name of psyche. From this word psyche comes the word psychology, which is the study of the soul. And not like the conventional psychology states that it is the study of the mind, because mind is not psyche, psyche is soul. And in Latin, the word for soul is anima. And that's why the word animal. The animal is, of course, the creature that has the most evolved body in all of the kingdoms. Mineral kingdom, plant kingdom. Of course, the animal is showing more vivid life. But there are many types of animals, as we are pointing now, or many types of animals which are in development. The snail is a type of anima that perceives only one dimension. The horse, the cat, and many other animals perceive two dimensions. In order to perceive the third dimension, which is that plane moving in the space, when that plane is moving in the space, is living, of course, many planes that eventually will make that that we call solid, that has length, width, and height, three dimensions. But in order to perceive that three-dimensional world with the consciousness, the anima must have an intellectual body. In other words, a body that has intellectual brain. Because the other animals, like the dog, the horse, the snail, they don't have intellectual brain. Only we have intellect. That brain that rationalizes. And then the intellectual brain gives us the capacity to go beyond representations. And then we have sensations, representations, and reasoning. The faculty of reasoning gives us the capacity as animals to know that we are in this three-dimensional world thanks to the three brains that we have. The brain related with sensations is that which we call instinct, which is located in the lower part of our body with the sexual glands. The world related with representations are related with this area of the heart, the emotional brain. And here we have the intellect, intellectual brain, with which we uh, rationalize. And then we say, why the air is not being wasted when we breathe it? And things like that, that the mind starts to think. Of course, the intellect is that sense or that uh, brain that gives us the capacity to think between the, uh, the opposites that we call good and evil, black and white. So we are three-dimensional beings. So that soul, that anima, that consciousness, that psyche, perceive through the three-dimensional body that we have with three brains, the three-dimensional world. But we are in more dimensions. Unfortunately, through the five senses, 
we cannot perceive more than three dimensions. When a solid moves in the space, is forming that that we call the hypersolid. The hypersolid is that dimension that is being photographed in this very moment by this camera, which is very uh, sensitive, which was invented in Russia by this uh, uh, family called Kirlian, and that you might find in many bookstores about the uh, Kirlian phenomena, which is this uh, camera that photographs the hyper dimension world of the physical matter that this camera is photographing for instance leaves metals parts of the body of animals and also of the human beings and they discover that beyond the matter there is always this aura of energy of course in Russia, the scientists baptized this uh, dimension we will call bioplastic matter or bioplastic body that is related to every matter. The esoteric doctrine was studying this body and uh, the doctrine called it etheric body or etheric matter, etheric energy, of course, is everywhere. And this is the fourth dimension, actually, that that we call physical body is not three-dimensional, but tetra-dimensional. Tetra from the Greek four, the four dimensions, but with the five senses, we cannot see more than three. In the ancient times, before the universal flood, in that continent, which was Atlantis, the four dimension was something very common for humanity. Today, when somebody sees the aura of the people, they call this person psychic. But I repeat, in the ancient times, that was something common. That's why in the Akashic records, which are related with the fourth dimension, you find uh, the history of other races with th that in the ancient times were fully developed psychologically speaking. Of course, when your soul, when your psyche, when your consciousness is capable to see more than three dimensions, it's obvious that your consciousness can develop uh, uh, more higher science. Technology that is above the three-dimensional technology. People in these times, for instance, think that this civilization in which we are living in this very moment, they think that is the highest of all the civilizations of the past. They think that the technology that we have in this very moment is the breaking point of technology. But really, when we go in the past investigating into the fourth dimension, and we discover the technology and the science of the Atlanteans, then we realize that we are not even to the knees to that uh, technology that the Atlanteans developed in the past. The Atlanteans, for instance, their psyche, their consciousness, 
was capable to see the fourth, and not only the fourth, but the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh dimensions. We have to state that there are seven basic dimensions. And with the, within these seven basic dimensions, we find the multidimensionality of the universe. So the Atlanteans were capable to see the rest of the higher dimensions because their physical body was having that that we call the third eye, very developed. The pituitary gland and the pineal gland were more developed. In this very moment, if we investigate our brain, we find the pineal gland and the pituitary gland together, but really they are degenerated. In the ancient times, the Atlanteans and the other race before the Atlanteans, they were cyclops, meaning that they were having another sense in the physical plane. So they were not having only five senses, they were having six senses. Clairvoyance was that sixth sense that humanity lost in this Aryan race. So they were capable of seeing those creatures that exist in the fourth dimension that we call elementals. And that they live in the fourth dimension, in the hyperspace the elementals of nature that are called salamanders, andins, mermaids, and I received many names and that just uh, are uh, being known for tales for children are really existing. They exist. But not for us. It's like the example of the snail. We exist, and we watch the snail, but for the snail we do not exist, because the snail cannot perceive us. When we see the snail, we feel just pity, and we think, well, eventually, and according to the law of evolution, that soul there will have more evolved bodies, and will perceive that other beings are in this universe, not only in one line because this universe is multidimensional. In the same example, we judge through our physical body. And uh, the problem of this humanity is that we uh, deny that that we cannot perceive. And many people think like because we are denying that that we cannot perceive, that thing does not exist. See, for instance, science or scientists of our world, they deny the ancient gods when they studied, for instance, Greek mythology or any type of mythology, of course, with a very clever way intellectually speaking, they explained that the ancient people were afraid of the elements. And because they didn't understand the forces of nature and of the cosmos, and then they were in Asian, they say, that were controlled by beings that they call gods. And that's why they were full of superstitions. That's what they say. But when you awake your consciousness through many senses that are asleep in the common and current people that are not serious in this type of work with the psyche, and then you see that really those beings that the ancient were uh, aware of them and conscious of them really exist. It's not that they were imagining them. Really, the gods, 
exist. But the trouble and the problem of this humanity is precisely that. That with the loss of the sense of carbons, or the sixth sense, with a degeneration in, the, in this planet of our Aryan race, they started developing the intellect. And the intellect became to develop by taking the energy from other senses, like intuition from the heart and the clairvoyance, which is here in the midbrow. Now the actual humanity lost the intuition and the clairvoyance, and even the polyvoyance, which is related with the pineal gland. So they cannot see more than three dimensions. And that is started exactly in the epoch of the Romans and uh, Greeks. Before that epoch, humanity was still clairvoyant and intuitive. But the Romans, for instance, started their sexual degeneration that they exported to many countries. When we study endocrinology, which is the science of the uh, secretion of the internal glands of our physical body, we know that the hormones are related with our glands. We know, for instance, that the pituitary gland and the pineal gland, which are located in the brain, are directly related with the sexual glands. The development of the pineal gland and of the pituitary gland depends from the hormones of the sexual glands. So when somebody wastes the sexual energy miserably, is destroying the senses related with the pituitary gland and the pineal gland. And eventually, of course, is losing not only the capacity of seeing higher dimensions, but the intelligence, which is related also with the pineal gland, and arrive to the point when, when they say, I don't believe in things that I cannot see with my five senses. Those things from the roof to the top above don't concern me because I am atheist. But what is an atheist? Somebody that denies that that cannot perceive, that that we call God. And it's because with the development of the intellect, people started to believe in God. In Atlantis, nobody was believing in anything. Only the blind needs to believe in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and many other things which are with light and color. But the people that see, they do not, believe, they do not need to believe in light or color. So the Atlanteans, they didn't need to believe in God. They were not God believers. Only in this Aryan race is where we find many sects that believe in different types of gods. But when we talk about that the gods exist, I am not referring to any type of god put it in the, belief, uh, I mean in the head of any believer of any religion or sect. Because Everybody that has not uh, developed his inner senses has to believe and has a God in accordance to his own image. As Moses says in the Bible, you shall not have image of me. I mean, you have to imagine that God is like this or like that. You have to see it. You have to, you have, to have the experience of it. When you have developed your inner senses and you can enter into the higher dimensions, and then you perceive that, that the people call God. Of course, then you realize that God has nothing to do with 
what the people believe. Because I repeat, we needed to believe there are many types of gods. But when we talk here that the God exists, I'm not talking about those beliefs. Because God is something that we ignore. So, the gods of ancient mythology are forces related, of course, with the forces of nature, intelligent forces. But in order to understand those forces, we need to awake consciousness. Because intellectually speaking, we can understand a lecture related with those creatures or beings that we call gods. And that in Christianity, we receive all the name. In Christianity, uh, those gods receive the name of angels, archangels, virtues, thrones, cherubims. The name is really something that does not, does not matter. What matters is a fact that we have to experience that with a consciousness. So there is a name, for instance, in Sanskrit, which is the word bodhisitta. Body in Sanskrit is wisdom. Sitta is heart. Wisdom heart. And it's because the consciousness is always related with the heart. In the heart, we have to build an altar for our own particular consciousness, for our own particular being and spirit that is within. When we incarnate the whole soul and the whole consciousness and the whole spirit within the body, and then we become a bodhisattva, which is this being related with Eden. The bodhisattva, or the heart wisdom being, is that creature that perceives the totality of the universe through his senses. Not only the five senses, but the seven superior senses related with the seven chakras, with the internal glands of the physical body. And that being is placed in that that we call Eden, the paradise, which is a state of consciousness when the consciousness is perceiving the totality of the dimensions of the universe. That is the creature that is written in the Bible into the image of God because God is everywhere. He's not a person. So being God everywhere is not within us. We have have to say God is that force, that energy that is in all dimensions and is the foundation, the source of life in every single dimension. So he's not a person. Because he's in the vast universe. Huge. So everything is within God. But the goal of the consciousness is to put that which is everywhere within itself. When somebody puts that which is everywhere within, and then is becoming a creature into the image of that, to the likeness of that. And that is precisely that uh, creature that the Bible called Adam. Capable of seeing that which is God. In God is capable to see that his own image within the creature. That's why it it is written let us make the man in accordance to our own image, to our own likeness. means that the whole universe is reflected in that creature. The multidimensional universe where God is, is there. And that's why it's a joke of, bust, of a bad taste when somebody says, we, the creatures that were made into the image of God, we are not those human beings or or that man written in the Bible, it doesn't exist in this planet. 
existed in the past. And now we have to do the effort to make that creature within. But to call us men into the image of God is to put God in this physical plane. This is what the people do. They think that God, as the Mormons think, start talking with a Mormon, he was telling me that God was with a head, with the arms and legs like we physically are. Because he was reading the Bible at the dead letter. Of course he was putting a God according to his own image. Or he was believing in somebody like that. That God doesn't exist. That God has no form. But when the consciousness when the soul, which is within each one of us, self realizes himself or herself, in that God then takes form. In that form is our form. But that is that God. It's not that we are going to become gods in the sense of the word. We will say it, vessels of that which is God. That's why Jesus said in the Bible, you are gods. It is written in the Bible that we are gods, but important. If we serialize ourselves, we will be real. Beings that we will into the likeness of God. To be into the likeness of God is to be another God, but not another God in the universe. Same God reflected in many mirrors. So that is a bodhisattva creature capable to see all dimensions. So in the time of uh, Atlantis they were not bodhisattvas but they were more aware of the dimensions of nature. And that bodhisattva was in development inside in the superior part of our body, which is a consciousness. Because the vital body, which is another name for the same etheric or, or bioplastic body, which is located in the fourth dimension, is that body that when it's fully developed, gives us, I repeat, the capacity of perceiving all the dimensions of nature. That fourth dimension in which we place that consciousness is called time. So the fourth dimension is time. But not the chronological time. That measurement that we put between one action to other action or one event in another event. That chronological time does not exist. It's an invention of the intellectual mind. We are talking here about time dimension, where present, past, and future are an eternal now. Beyond the time, the fourth dimension, we find the fifth dimension. Time is a circle. Time is not an extended and prolonged line that many believe without end. Time is a circle. And we are in that circle. When we enter and we are alive, from the very moment when we are out of the womb of our mother, is when the soul, the consciousness, is entering into the circle of time. And we are in this time, very moment, in that dimension. But it's in the fourth dimension, not in this three-dimensional world. The chronological time that we use in order to measure events in this three-dimensional world, I repeat, is something that does not exist. And the proof is that right now is 4.30, but in China is another time. So, when we die physically, we leave time. 
and we enter into another circle. That other circle is what we call eternity. So eternity is not time without end. No. Eternity is something completely different to time. And is not a straight line. It's a circle, another circle. Of course, can we perceive eternity? It's another dimension, another circle. And uh, we enter into that circle of eternity every night when uh, physically we go to sleep. Then that that we call my emotions, my thoughts. We say my emotions and my thoughts because we have to understand that the mind and the emotional vehicle that we have are just vehicles, are not the reality of ourselves, because also people used to identify themselves with the mind, and they think that they are the mind. The mind is something that we have to control, that mind. It's also related to that that we call my feelings, my emotion. The two parts of ourselves, which are emotion and thought, belong to eternity. And they express themselves, of course, through the brain and through the emotional center located between the heart and the navel. So you feel emotions in that area between your heart and your navel, and your thoughts, you feel them in, the, in your intellectual brain. But of course, since we cannot see with the five senses our thoughts and emotions, neither the emotions and thoughts of people, then uh, uh, we arrive to the conclusion that it's because they belong to other dimensions, but they exist. We see and we feel inside of ourselves our thoughts and feelings, emotions. We cannot deny that. So it is not necessary to prove that. But it's very uh, amazing to see or to uh, perceive the thoughts of people and emotions of people. But for that we have to develop clairvoyance. In other words, our psyche, our soul, our consciousness has to perceive the fifth dimension, which is eternity. So, we are in that fifth dimension in this very moment, but we cannot perceive it through the five senses. When the physical body rests, on the bed, that that we call emotions and thoughts are no longer there. They leave. They enter into the circle of eternity. Then, when the, the body, the physical body, is already charged with solar energy, and then no longer needs to rest or to sleep, and like the magnet that attracts the iron in the same way the body attracts that part that is my emotions, my thoughts, and where the consciousness is trapped or bottled up. Of course, the soul or the consciousness return. And then when entering into the physical body, we open the eyes of the physical body, and then we said, well, 
I am awaking of my dreams. And if we remember the dreams, just that we are remembered, the experiences or the events that we were performing in the circle of eternity for eight hours, six hours, who knows how long we dream or we rest on the bed. And any time when the physical body is resting, it's because that part of us, which is the soul, within thoughts and emotions, are outside in eternity. Outside of the physical body. It's not that they are going to enter into eternity. They are there into eternity. In this very moment, for instance, our thoughts and emotions are within eternity. But they are not enjoying that uh, uh, dimension because they are in jail. We are in this cage that we call physical body. Say, for instance, other creatures of nature that are not so uh, dense material like us. Like, for instance, the trees, the plants. Those are also creatures, but not so obvious like the animals that have individual bodies and then walk around in the fields. The trees are creatures that are there in one place. So because they are there in one place forever until the plant is withering, then the soul has the capacity of entering and living into the other dimensions with a lot of capacity, easy. But we are so attached to this physical world that we lost that capacity. And in order for living the physical body, in order to live the physical body, we need to sleep physically to acquire that power and only to leave the physical body easily without sleeping is to reach the mastery. There are masters, for instance, that they can leave part of them in the lecture, given the lecture, and part of them can leave part of their consciousness into other dimensions and to do other things. Is that what we call the power of ubiquity? that many saints of the Middle Ages and other times in the world were showing that they were in many parts at the same time. So the consciousness was capable even to materialize in those three-dimensional places and helping and giving the knowledge to different people in different places. To do that is not only to perceive dimensions, but also to dominate those dimensions. Today, uh, for us, if we want to be in one place, we need to, uh, I mean, to take the airplane or a car and to come, for instance, here. Right? Because our consciousness is so attached to the matter, the physical matter, that it's very difficult to have that kind of dominion. But we have to start. In our knowledge, we learn how to travel consciously in the dimension of eternity or dimension of time or in time and eternity. But in order to do it, we have to exercise that state of awareness because the state of awareness gives us the power to see and to perceive all the dimensions. If we are like the snail, being in other dimensions, but without doing the effort of perceiving and, and being attentive of those dimensions, we will never be aware of those dimensions. This is what we call the self-realization of the being. To work with the consciousness in order for little by little perceiving other dimensions. To begin, we have to know that eternity is that dimension that we enter when the physical body is sleeping. And because we are not aware of that dimension, the only thing that we have there is that that we call dreams. What is a dream? It's an experience in the circle of eternity, the fifth dimension. But without awareness. Just entering there mechanically. 
And the same happens when eventually the physical body dies, then the mind and the emotional part of that person does, uh, do not die. The only part that dies is the physical body. It's the only thing apart that dies. But those elements that belong to eternity do not die. They enter into the circle of eternity for a certain period of, of, we will say, time in order to understand. And then, when that period finishes, and then the soul, the consciousness, is again leaving the circle of eternity in order to enter again into the circle of time. And that is what commonly people call reincarnation. But really we don't call it reincarnation because reincarnation is a law which is very uh, special only for the beings that are aware. For the people that are not aware of uh, dimensions, we call it return, which is a mechanical return. When we leave eternity and we enter into time. So, within the circle of eternity, we find that dimension within eternity that is called limbo. So limbo is the infra dimension of eternity. But within that eternity, which is the fifth dimension, that circle, we find the higher dimensions where we find the beings, creatures, that in religion they call them angels. Really, uh, in Hebrew, the creatures that live in that fifth dimension or circle of eternity are called Beni Elohim and Elohim, conscious beings that control that dimension in the same way that we know and are aware of this three-dimensional world. Why? Because they have vehicles that the consciousness utilizes utilizes in order to see and to perceive that dimension. So we hold here that in order to perceive dimensions we need to develop consciousness. To develop consciousness is to build, to create vehicles with senses capable to perceive those phenomena that are within the circle of eternity. And that is what the Master Jesus in the Gospels called to be born again. So that statement of to be born again is not what the people think in this three-dimensional world. That in order to be born again you need to believe in what is written in the Bible. There are many beings that are with internal bodies related with eternity, subtle bodies, and that they are twice born, in other words, as the Bible states, and they do not know anything about the Bible. And it's because it's nothing related to with belief, something that we, we have to exercise to, to create. Those beings are not only from this planet Earth, in this uh, circle of eternity, you find beings from other planets that have physical body in other planets of this solar system and other solar systems. So they are familiar because the circle of the eternity is a type of circle or dimension where time does not exist neither space in the sense that we perceive the space 
In one second, for instance, you can be in the center of the galaxy, in the circle of eternity. In this physical world, of course, according to the calculations of the mathematicians of this world, in order to be in the center of the galaxy, we need years and years, or light years, millions of light years, moving into the space with rockets. But in the circle of eternity, to be in the center of the galaxy is a simple thing. Is a, as we say it in, in this place, it's not a big deal. But of course, for us, that we are accustomed to think three-dimensionally, and we are in this three-dimensional physical body, we think, oh wow, to be in the center of the galaxy? So if we are fighting to go into the moon, and it is very difficult, right? Mars, Venus, center of the galaxy? Well, if you really perceive eternity with your consciousness, if you build those superior bodies, if you are, or you become uh, born again, you will see that that really uh, is possible. When somebody has these bodies of eternity that can perceive the dimension of eternity, this person can study the mysteries of death and life. It will be easy for this person to be in contact with other creatures of other planets or beings of other planets. So then, then when this person sees any movie from Hollywood and that they imagine how the extraterrestrials are, the only thing that this person can do is to laugh about it because it really has nothing to do with the reality. Or with that show that we call Star Trek, we would call it no imagination. It's better if we call it fantasy. So how beautiful it is to perceive the fifth dimension consciously not just in dreams. When somebody does not create those vehicles in order to perceive the circle of eternity, the fifth dimension, that person eventually will die. Eternally speaking. Because here, we die physically. You know that when your physical body becomes old, eventually you will have to die. But this type of death that we are talking here is related to the circle of eternity. Because in the circle of time, you die when your physical body becomes old. But in the circle of eternity, eventually you die after having uh, several uh, opportunities in the circle of time. According to the law of Buddha, the soul has 108 opportunities to enter into the circle of time, meaning to the physical dimension, 108 physical bodies. In other words, the soul has to die, physically speaking, in the physical world, 108 times when that amount of lives are finishing. And then the, the soul descends into the infra-dimensions of eternity in order to be disintegrated as the physical body disintegrates in the grave in seven years. The emotional and mental elements that we have within that in psychology is called ego. And that is coming from the Latin ego, ego, which means I, myself, but not the reality of myself, but just the false self that eventually die and takes of course an eternity in order to die because it's within the circle of eternity the infra dimensions of eternity or the circle of eternity is what in religions call hell or inferno you see the same word inferno comes from the Latin word infernus, which means inferior. 
So the infra, infra dimensions or the inferior worlds where the soul enter in order to be disintegrated are located in the circle of eternity. So the hell is not in the fourth dimension, is not in, in the third dimension, but in the circle of eternity. Is what in Kabbalah called the world of Tripa. Of course, if you are conscious in the fifth dimension, in the circle of eternity, you can be also conscious of those infra dimensions. Easily. As easily is, for instance, for you with your physical body to go into the valley, descend into the mountain, and to go deeper into the caves of the earth, exploring the infra dimensions of the third dimension. In the same way, a person with the internal vehicles, conscious of the circle of eternity, can go deep into the infra dimensions of eternity, and then uh, it's amazing to see that what religions call hell, whether it is Judaism, Christianity, or Islamic, etc., are just symbols, flags of the crude reality which is there. That is what the book called the Bible, in the other book called Revelation, talks about the second death, related with the death of that emotional and thought part of us that disintegrates in the circle of eternity after from the innate opportunities in the circle of time. The beings that create vehicles in order to stay in the superior dimensions of the circle of eternity do not enter into the infra dimensions. Do not enter into hell. In other words. That's why it is written it is necessary to be born again in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven, the superior dimension of eternity. The fifth dimension. But of course, beyond the fifth dimension is another dimension, which is the sixth dimension. To describe the sixth dimension is not possible. Because it's beyond our mind. I told you already that our thoughts related with our mind belong to eternity. But that which is beyond eternity is the causal world. The dimension where, according to Kabbalah, we find the Malachim. Those creatures that do not only have vehicles in eternity, but also in that sixth dimension, the causal world, or the world of willpower. There is where really we find the abode of the soul, of the human soul, that human soul which is called Tifret, beauty in Hebrew. To enter there is only possible if we create another body that will allow us to perceive the sixth dimension through its own senses. The consciousness has to perceive that. Souls that do not have this type of vehicle, sometimes they enter into that sixth dimension. While in the physical body, that consciousness, that soul, that person, that anima, is following the path of meditation. So in the physical world, this person is seated 
in a very relaxed position, practicing some mantra, controlling the mind, trying to put the mind in silence. When this person achieves that goal of that meditation, and then the consciousness leaves and goes directly into the sixth dimension, and is experiencing that that in Sanskrit is called shamadi, ecstasy, satori, rapture. It's a beautiful experience, impossible to describe with words. So any one of us, if we want to go beyond, or to have an experience, in order to experience that dimension which is beyond eternity, it's possible. By practicing meditation, Zen meditation. Of course, if we are good persons, good souls, after the physical body dies, in one of the opportunities that we have in the circle of time, that I told you are 108 times, in any of those times when the physical body dies, if we were good souls, in the circle of eternity, the beings that are there will help that soul in order to be out of the emotional vehicle and the mind. And the beings which command certain forces of the sixth dimension will pull that consciousness, like the magnet pull the iron, in order for that consciousness or that soul to enter into the dimension of the causal world, which is beyond eternity. And then that person, or that soul, enjoys what we call a reward for a certain amount of time, speaking in our terms. Of course, after finishing that gift, that reward, the soul will return because the goal of that soul is to build vehicles in order to be aware of all dimensions but it's always reward if, it, if that soul was good that's why in many religions they said that if you are good you go to heaven the sixth dimension but in this time it's very rare to find a person a soul that goes into the higher dimensions when they die, immediately they return into a new physical body. They just spend a little bit of time in the circle of eternity, and immediately they are in the circle of time again. Very rare are those that go beyond time and eternity. So that's why, in a certain way, in our consciousness, we have that experience. In the fourth time, we had that experience in one of our deaths that we had in the past. We feel like something there in reality. But if you build the causal body, you enter there with your physical body alive. You don't need to, to die physically or to have any experience with meditation. You have a causal body, you enter there. And then you are aware of that that the people call heaven. But it's because you have a vehicle in order to perceive it. Beyond the sixth dimension, we find the seventh dimension. The absolute. That which is beyond God and divine beings. That that we call the eternal com uh, cosmic common father. Which is not a person. It's something unknown. It's the source of the matter. It's the source of the energy. It's the source of everything that exists. To have an experience in the seventh dimension is also possible. To 
perceive that when we are alive in the physical body. But it is only possible if we are following the path of chastity. It's impossible to have an experience in the seventh dimension, or to have that that we call Mahakalpa Shamari, the experience of the consciousness within that which has no name, beyond gods and goddesses. That experience is only possible, I repeat, if we are following the path of chastity. What is chastity? Is a wise control of the sexual energies. It's not sexual ab abstinence, celibacy, like many people think. They say that this people is in chastity because he's not having sexual act. That is not chastity. Chastity is to know how to control the sexual energy. It's the most difficult thing for the initiate. But that energy that achieved the control of the sexual forces, not only in the physical body, but in other bodies. Because the sexual energy is a sexual force that is in activity in all dimensions. It is the origin of the seven dimensions. To control that is to achieve complete chastity. Master of the force of creation. And then we experience that. The same force will take us and to experience that that we call the absolute. And then for us will be something that is not a tale for children. Or well, like many people in this physical world, they say that they are atheists because they don't believe in superstitions. Of course, I agree with them. Because when you do not have experience of that which is the reality of the higher dimensions, the only thing that you ha can have within is beliefs, superstitions. And sometimes, those beliefs, and most of the time, have nothing to do with the reality. That's why the first commandment of Moses is you shall not make any image of God. In other words, what was Moses pushing the people to do? You don't have to have any image. You have to experience that which is God. And then you will not have any image within. But in these times, everybody has images. According to their own behalf, of course. And of course, that's why uh, people are in, in many sects. Because each one of them have different image of that that they call God. So, if you have in our mind a beautiful image of God, the most beautiful that it can be, has nothing to do with God. That is uh, the reality. When you experience that which is God, then you realize that the images are in the mind, and that which is God is beyond the mind. But for that we have to develop the consciousness in order to perceive uh, the multidimensional universe. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.